Okay, so this is going to be a cupping of a Colombian coffees from a producer that we've been working with for a while. So these are new samples that they've sent us. And you'll notice I'm weighing out the coffee here. I'm going to put 12 grams in each cup. And with the water to coffee ratio, that's going to be a 1 to 18. So I'm just weighing out the coffees. Now, you'll notice I'm only going to be using one cup per different coffee. Now, the reason for this is usually in cupping, you cup with five cups or at least a minimum of three. And that's when you're looking for defects. So you can compare a pretty significant amount of coffee and each cup um, is going to be compared to each other. So you're looking for defects. Now, this is different. I already know that this coffee is a high grade. Um, or at least I know its specialty and I know that I'm not really interested in trying to find the defects I'm more interested in just looking to see which of these coffees is the best one for me to work with with regards to flavor so I'm looking for two things one is a coffee to potentially go into a blend and then the other is a coffee that I'm going to offer as a single origin so here I'm just finishing up weighing out the last beans and then it's moving into the grinding. So you can't quite see it very clearly but it's always really important to make sure that you purge the grinder. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that I put a few of the coffee beans of that particular coffee through the grinder uh, and then put them aside before I grind the coffee from the the cup that I'm going to be tasting. That means that each coffee is not contaminated from the grinding of the previous coffee. That's a really, really important thing to do whenever you're preparing a cupping. So finishing up here, now it's getting ready for the water. So I'm just preparing the water and it's a good idea to make sure that that's nice and hot. Temperature to use for water is 93. So between 86 and 93 for when you're, for when you're cupping. Um, and I like it on the hotter side. So Cropster is the software which helps me as a roaster keep track of all of my profiles, my inventory, and then it also has uh, a cupping facility. So these are the preloaded coffees into the back end of Cropster so that I can assess the cupping. And it uses the same process as the SCA cupping score sheet. So you, you cup through the flavor. So this is now just going through the aroma. Starts with the aroma and look at the intensity of the aroma and then I'm also just trying to jot down any specific aroma flavor notes that I might be able to smell. So we'll go through this really quickly. This is the first step while the water's boiling. Go through each coffee and uh, try the aroma and make sure I give it a score because when I've added the water I can also go back and have a a little change of this but ideally once I've uh, added the water the aroma will be will be a set score So this is now just preparing to get the water ready. So I have a set of spoons and I have a cloth that I'm making sure I can tap out any extra water. So now the water is ready to be poured in to each of the cups. It's really important that we set a timer at this point. So I've set a timer for four minutes. 
and I fill up each cup up to the brim so that you're getting an accurate brewing with the same ratio for each cup. It helps having a kettle with a gooseneck, but otherwise a normal kettle would be fine. So now the four minutes isn't yet up, so it's still not the right time to do the break. So I'm just smelling the wet aroma now, and I'll make any notes around what I can smell on the wet aroma. Sometimes there's some new things that, that pop up when you've added the water that you want to change from when it was just the dry aroma. So aroma can be either wet or dry. Um, some forms and some cupping protocols allow you to kind of make different scores and also different um, attributes associated with either the wet or the dry. So now we're moving into the break and the break is where we break the surface of coffee grounds that have risen to the top of the coffee cup and as I break the surface I'm careful to make sure that none of the grounds fall out of the cup and you're not stirring the cup you're just breaking the surface and then the, the grounds will hopefully sink then you wait not longer than a minute and you're then going to clean. Now some people make sure that they can actually assess the break. In my experience I found that there's very little point of really assessing the break and the flavors at the break. Um, the aroma is really important but then obviously the the cupping of the liquid is is absolutely critical so i'm just finishing up cleaning here the the temperature of the coffee is still going to be far too hot to start to sip as you go through the cupping it's really important to just keep a clean tidy surface i'm just using a thermometer here to check the temperature of the coffee. This is a little personal thing that I like to do to make sure that I'm cupping the coffee where it's not too hot, but it's the maximum that I can cope with, which is about 55. That's in Celsius. So now, as I sip each coffee, I'm going through the different attributes. There's, we finished the aroma, now we go through flavor, aftertaste, body, and acidity. I tend to kind of go through all the coffees and fill out those first four attributes and then swing down to the next coffee, fill out those three or four attributes. And then I'll circle back and I'm always assessing each element of the coffee really as I go. One thing I'll mention at this point is flavor. It's what you're really looking for for a high score with flavor is the complexity of the flavor. So lots of layers. That's what I like to think about it. If you can taste not just one dominant flavor, but many different flavors. If there's something which is very dominant and stands out, then I'll, I'll write it down. It might be chocolate. It might be almond. It might be stone fruit or floral. So with some of the coffees you can see I've already gone through and made scores in each. Learning how to cup coffee is a really really valuable skill as a roaster. I would say outside of actually roasting, cupping coffee is the next most invaluable uh, most valuable skill because the cupping is really you're being able to kind of view what the profile is doing and has done and then according to the cup quality and the taste you can go back and make some adjustments 
The cupping score is each attribute is scored out of 10. And generally speaking, when it's specialty coffee, it needs to be above the 7.25 for each attribute. So if I feel that the body of the attribute or the body of the coffee is kind of borderline, then I might score it a 7 or a 7.25. The overall score, for it to be specialty, it needs to be 80 and above. But I would say that really coffees that are sold as premium coffees, and what I mean by premium is sold for their flavor, sold for their attributes of real quality, then a score of 85 and above is really something that's going to make a big impact on the, on the price of the coffee. So filling out all the details and then I'll circle back and look at some of the key attributes of how I do my labeling. So here I'm just going through and looking at what I call brightness, which is partly acidity and partly sweetness. And these are the attributes that we actually put on our label. So instead of putting the flavor attributes on our label, we tend to put it into these categories with a with a score of between 0 and 10. So if brightness was 8, that's a pretty high score. So you know that the, the coffee is going to be quite zingy and quite bright. And I'll, I'll keep cupping the coffee all the way down until it's room temperature. That's really important as well. You give a, a score right from when it's really, really hot all the way down to room temperature. Okay, so this is just me finishing up. I'll make a few final comparisons where I'll look back and forth and see have I got it right with the different coffees compared to each other now. And that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something. Thanks for watching.